this is a neural hackathon session and uh, we are going to show how to uh, create and train uh, neural networks in a Java environment and we are going to do some uh, basic uh, examples how to do image recognition using neural networks. So everybody has the USB and the software now. Go to the neural studio folder and to start application go to bin folder and depending on what OS you have start started from using file neural studio sh for Linux or this Windows. So okay. When you start it you should be getting this splash screen. Melissa doesn't have it. I can take a USB stick. Uh, it's still. Okay, I can have a more thing. Can you. Uh, so, we will wait until everybody has this screen. So, what are we going to do? First, I'm going to show you some very simple example how to create a very uh, simple neural network in uh, Neural Studio and how to train it. Then we are going to use simple image recognition example and if we have time we can do more complex image recognition example. So are we going to develop something new for you or it's not going to be the case just for... No, we are going to show how, how to create neural network in Europe and then uh, we're going to show how to use that neural network in Java code. Okay, and nice. how to create image recognition component and use it in Java code. Mm -hmm. So directly, here we have a uh, tool for creating neural networks which can be then used in regular Java application, not just inside this application. We have, frame, we have simple jar file, which is uh, in this folder that you got here, see? Um, Neuro 2.9, that's the newest release that is, has not been officially released yet, so you have this advantage in using it now. This uh, Neuro of, um, of Core, that's the basic jar, and this Neuro of Image Rec, that's a uh, library that provides image recognition API. So back to the tool. Uh, Marisa, are you okay? Yes. Okay. So first we are going to create very simple neural network uh, that uh, can do, for example, basic logic function act. It's a very simple example that will show you what is the process of creating and training neural network. So create first new neural project. Okay. Neural project and in any way you like. <coughs> and next thing, we are going to uh, create a data set that will be uh, Describe the logic function end. Okay. To create new data set, hit the new file from toolbar or from menu file new. And here from the file types, choose data set. It's very simple, it follows the uh, same workflow as working with any IDE. So at, at the next, next screen, you will be asked to uh, provide the name of the data set. Let's say it's end data set. You're going to ask what type of data set is. What? Sorry, we have a problem. Yeah. Uh, the first window uh, could not load tons of modules. Say, uh, disable and continue. continue. Yes. Okay, and then we do a new project. Yeah. And then we should have on the left hand side Neuroph, right? Uh, yes, yes, after creating new project. But we don't. I have Java, Maven, and Samples, that's all I got in the categories. Like this? Yeah, I don't have that. So some of the ones that were disabled probably uh, were the important ones. No, I think, I think they shouldn't be. Just a second. Oops. So uh, what are you most to For you? Mm -hmm. You got it. Uh, so some, some of them didn't load. No, this is not the idea. So, Okay. So how do you start? Like you? Yeah, I'm sorted. You're, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. All good. Let's go. Let's see. 
should have moved up from my line. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, right. still? Is it okay, so, Steven? Is it okay to go to help yeah. Massimo? Yeah. yeah. To go to help Massimo? Can I go to help him? Can I go to help Massimo? Yes. Yeah. 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 Works for Marisa. Right. So right now I'm going there. Let's say here. Yeah, and then it's here. So oh, New York Studio. North Studio. And I'm going to the Yeah, I'm going to the Why does it? What am I doing wrong? It is not. It might be. It, you're not in the right folder. Okay, yeah, let's just do that real quick. But I double clicked on it and it wasn't working, so. Try, try. You can try to double click again, but then we'll see. I think you will do it. Yeah. We'll yeah. yeah. And then your studio. Yeah. Then bin. Okay, so here I got that. So what I would do. Right? Yes. That's what we would do? Yeah. So, no, wait. Turn it on. Okay. Now it's going to come out with the... Yeah. Uh, ask from, but those are uh, non-important models. Two sugars. Uh, so that's what I've done. That's wrong. That's not how it should be. Right. Because now I do, do this. That's, that's what it means. So maybe what I should do... Is maybe turn on. Good settings. So lots of stuff is not there, but well, that's good about Hudson. But Europe is right here. Yeah, you see? yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah. why. Try. Yeah. They, they should be enabled, but just in case it depends, it didn't make them logic so at all. Yeah. And there is another one. But then we it should, it should just. Yeah. Go. It should go for a lot. Activation failed. Oh man. Okay, cancel with the button installer. I'm it's running Java 8, maybe that's the problem. Sure. Yeah, uh, you should be running Java 8. Let me see what do I have. You, you have to be running Java 8, not mm. 7 then. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, I have a nice from Java 8. Actually, yeah, I have Java 7. You have Java 7. Do you have Java 8? I have Java 8. I have Java 8. I have Java, I have Java, I have Java, okay. Java no, I have Java 8 uh, also, I think. Try it. Just set it to Java 8. Um, let me see. Those so Michael, you're running it with Java? Linux. 1.7. Not, not, uh, yeah, it's not Mac. It should be Java 8. No, the Java 8 is not here. It just go here. No, actually, I think I installed it myself. Did I? No. Alright. Uh, I don't have Java 8. Yes, you Okay, we'll continue. Right. Yeah. Step and uh, I'll get back to you and help you to get it working. Or even later to continue yeah. when you make it work here for you. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we were about to create a simple data set. We want a two input logic function and we say we want two inputs and we want one output for data set. Uh, this uh, type of uh, data set means that either we are go what kind of learning algorithm we are going to apply. So if you want to use so-called supervised learning, we have to provide inputs and desired outputs. So this is how we are saying, okay, we want to provide outputs. There are other types of learning rules which provide, <coughs> require only to provide input, but we are going to use uh, backpropagation learning rule, which, which is a supervised type of learning rule and it provi requires input and outputs. When we lost your presentation here for some reason. Where? Mm -hmm. Oh, on the... Uh -huh. You see? No, no, probably because of the setup. Setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still... Okay. When you create data set, okay, have you came to this point? Yeah. After 
So it is very easy. You say add row, and you can enter the end logic function. We say zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one one. Right. This is the basic logic function, and we say okay. So now we have data set, and now we want to create a neural network that will provide uh, that we have behavior like a logic end function. We say to create new neural network, we say file new, and then we choose neural network file type. We hit the next button, and in next screen dialog, we choose type of neural network we want to create. So here we, are, we go with so-called perceptron types of networks, which are very simple basic neural networks that can solve the basic logic problem. Next. Next dialog, it will ask us how many inputs and how many outputs the perceptron will have. So we use the same number of inputs and outputs that we specified for data set. Say two inputs and one output. Next. I missed that one. You, how, how do you start this uh, dialog here? Right click. And is it for neural network? File new. Neural oh, network. Okay. So, as you can see, it follows you know, Java 2 philosophy and workflow. Just project, new, file, new, whatever you need, it's there. It's a starting point for everything you need. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys figured it out. Good job. Yeah. So, here we have this small neural perceptor neural network. You see, it has two layers of neurons with two neurons in input layer and one neuron in output layer. So we can try to play with it if we click on that window so it gets selected. These buttons in the toolbar will get enabled. And you can try to say set input to say one one to see what we are going to get. And as you can see it provides it gives zero output. For one one as input it provides gives zero output. So this is not what we want, right? We want logical end function. You can try setting it input one zero. It is still a zero. So it doesn't work like a logic function. Now the thing is if you want to train this network, you you can show you can right click on it and say in display preferences to say show weights. Okay? And you see these two numbers corresponding to these connections. You can zoom it in like this using control mouse wheel and see what are their values. It's not very important, but you just get the idea what network you're looking inside and what's happening. So in order to train this network, procedure is very easy. You just take this data set, drag and drop that data set onto the corresponding field field here. And here we said from a data set, new data set too, right? This is the end data set that we have been, that we created. And then the train button in the toolbar will, will become enabled. Is that okay? Never. Okay. And next step is just to hit the train button. Uh, the this set uh, dialog for setting learning parameters will uh, will show will be shown. And then you can leave the default parameters. For example, maximum error, because the algorithm back propagation works like. Uh, minimizing the error of the network. It's feeding inputs, getting outputs, calculating difference between desired outputs and the outputs we actually get, and uh, calculates the mean square error for the entire data set. The goal of the algorithm is to minimize that uh, mean square error. And uh, the parameter that learn rule use is uh, 0 0.2, it's nice default value. It specifies the amount uh, in which in each iteration, the weight change, the weights are going to be changed. And we have options to display error graph, so we can observe how the error changes during the learning. And when we start it, as you can see, uh, this, this network learned very fast, since it, it is a simple problem. Just let me put this down, okay. 
here's just in five iterations you see that the error jumps and then it loads in just five iterations so if we go here and uh, hit the test button you will see that this network uh, have desired behavior for each input that corresponds to logical function it will give desired output for 0, 0 gets 0, for 0, 1 gets 0 and only for 1, 1 it outputs 1 so this is a very simple problem this is not something that neural networks are used for this is I just wanted to show you how to create and how to change neural networks it is ok if it is different the thing is that when neural networks are created they are initialized with random weight values you know? uh, training neural network is about adjusting these weight values here okay? and uh, uh, they are randomly initialized so your starting conditions may be different and if you got the different this error curve it's okay, it's fine it's important that the net, uh, error goes down yeah. It can go to zero in this case, but usually it's something very close to zero. Okay. So Massimo, any luck? Uh, just finishing Stone and Java. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as you can see, this is the approach. You just go file new project, new neural network, new data set. You, could, you can import any kind of data into that data set. And just drag and drop okay, to neural network and hit the train button. So this is uh, the idea of this tool was to bring neural network functionality into the hands of uh, the mainstream Java developer, you know. And it is very tightly integrated into IDE and one does not have to know much about neural network. That's just the basic concepts and just have a tool to uh, work with. So uh, the next step uh, is to Uh, is to create a simple image recognition neural network. The New York Studio provides tools uh, specialized for specific application, applications. So one of them is image recognition. So in order to do that, we are going to create a new neural project and say image recognition. You can name it anyway you can any way you like, okay. okay. And next, go to File New, and here in File Types, choose Image Recognition. Okay. So what we are going to run now is the Image Recognition Wizard, in which we will provide the images that we want to recognize and the parameters of the neural network that we are going to train and at the end of, end of this vision we are going to get uh, the neural network and the data set that corresponds to those images so this is how the dialog for specified, specified images look like and you go add directory click add directory button and then uh, go to let me see this. So find this. And, um, Hecaton here, right? Hecaton. And you have the folder named Animal Data. Okay. Go into that folder and select Animals folder. Okay. So in Animal Data, select Animals folder. Say select directory. And all the images from that directory will be edit here into dialog and you can see we have a bird, a cat, a dog, fish and a rabbit silhouette. It is very basic uh, black and white images so we wanted to make a very simple <coughs> example. Did everybody do this? You're using your own photos, yeah. okay? <laughs> good luck with that but <laughs> uh, I'll show you something. Maybe it's good to try to use this first to get the idea how it works. And then we can uh, show, yeah. Yeah, I'm not this photo. It's not actually. Carry on. Anyways, okay. Carry on outside. 
Okay. Uh, then hit the next, and in next step, you need to provide so-called junk deer. The, that's the um, images that you don't want to recognize, don't want to be recognized. And they are used in order to avoid false recognition. You know, you don't want, for example, image that is all black to be recognized as a cat, right, or as a dog, or as any other. So. What are we doing? We are providing what is background. In this sample image that we used, the background is white. So there is a little trick with this. Um, after some experimenting with different settings, we figured out that uh, it is good to provide all blue, all green and all red. The thing is, this image recognition works uh, like it takes RGB color information for each pixel of the image and feeds that information into the neural network. You know? And uh, if you have a white you know, color, that's 255, 255, 255. And here we are providing this separate co as a separate components. You could provide just the white image, but in our experiments it uh, turned out that this variation works better because if image is all green, it will provide all once input to the neural network. You know, this two, uh, this uh, RGB information is normalized and scaled to the range of zero to one. You know, because the neural network works with input uh, in that space. So here you have simple image editing that you can crop for resize or grayscale image, but it's a very basic one. It sometimes it's handy. Next. We hit the next button, say the name of the data set. <coughs> so now we are at the point where we are create, creating a data set of those images that we specified in previous step. And here you see image sampling resolution, width and height. Okay. All images that we provided will be scaled to this size. It is very important because uh, it, it will lower the number of inputs to the neural network, the number of neurons we need. Because you see, <coughs> each value, RGB value of each pixel corresponds to a single neuron. So, for example, if we have image 20 times 20 pixels, that will be uh, 1,200 neurons. Because we 20 times 20 is 400 times 3, because we are getting each RGB component. <coughs> so, the thing is, we want to make the network the smallest possible, the images smallest possible that provide good results. How to know that? Well, it's up to you to try different settings and see what works. <coughs> we hit the next button and then we are asked to specify the network name, for example, animals net, <coughs> and the number of hidden neurons, we can say 60. <coughs> and we hit the finish button. <coughs> now, <coughs> sorry. In the project window, we will get AnimalsNet and Animals Data files, which are the neural network and the data set. This uh, window that opened image recognition test, we are going to be using it for testing at the end. <coughs> so just click the neural network from the project. And you will see how it looks like. So, as you can see, it has uh, 1,200 neurons input, so it's a much larger network. And this is a network called multi layer perceptor. The, in the first example, we did very basic perceptor with only two layers of neurons. This one has, between input and output layer, has several so called hidden layers of neurons. It's just a collection of neurons, right? That's what it means, layer of neurons. <coughs> and you can see, <coughs> here are 20,417 <coughs> uh, connections. It's a huge number of weights that needs to be adjusted during the training. So the thing is, if you have a very big network, the training might last long. Uh, next, we are going to do the same thing as we did with the 
logic function, simple logic function, just drag and drop data set to this neural network and hit the train button. Again, you can use default settings. <coughs> Here you will notice one, one more parameter, that's momentum. It's an additional parameter that can help you to tweak. We'll not go into the details, but just use default values. And there is a, also another parameter which says if you want to limit maximum number of iterations. Because what can happen is that you train network, but you just can't find, the algorithm just can't find the right values, so the problem can be solved. It cannot minimize the function. So you say, okay, if you run for, I don't know, 500,000 iterations, then give up. It is not going to happen. We can leave this out and just hit the train button. So these were very simple images. And as you can see, in only 27 iterations, the network will learn the problem. So it is now being able to recognize these animals. Is this working for everyone? Okay, exception showing some of the images because I'm used other ones. You can report. <laughs> A bug. <laughs> yeah. You can just repeat the wizard and it's. So now we can go to the image recognition test. Okay. And say select uh, image. And uh, in um, this hackathon folder. We can go to the test folder and select any of these. So here we have three images of the cat, which are a bit, a little bit distorted, you know, and they are different than the or original images that are used during the train. So choose the blurred cat, and you will see this is the blurred version of cat, and here you will see the probability that this image belongs to the one that network has learned. And as you, as you can see, this image is recognized as a cat with 0 0.7 value of conf confidentiality that is a cat. And you see the other values are 0 0.03. So this is most likely a cat. Okay. This is what the neural network is saying to us. You can try this pixelated cat. Again, most likely this is a cat. And also you can try this cat, which is more fat, right? Bigger cat. And, okay, this is again most likely cat. You can try, of course, the different images. You can try it on your, on your own to change, uh, to change image a bit and see if it works. If it doesn't work, what you can do is to use the change image and include it in the training set and retrain the network, repeat the process. So the network will you learn to recognize the different, different uh, variations of the original image. The main point of using neural networks is to gain that generalization ability. So it can successfully solve problems that it, have ne it had never seen. It can recognize the images that it had never seen. There is always, uh, it is very difficult to achieve that, but with some experimenting, uh, it is possible. Now, uh, I don't know how much time we have. I think we're out of time. That's my guess. 11.17. I think 30, I think 15 more, 15 minutes we have. 30, right? 11, 30, yes, 11, 30. Okay. Now you have learned how to do this simple image recognition. We are going to do the same thing with uh, some more complex data set. Okay. So what we can do is to take, for example, images of all of us here, JQuit participants, and try to learn the network that will recognize us. That can be done. Of course, it's difficult to train the network with you know different angles and different shades and things like that, but. Uh, uh, there is also uh, there is also recommended techniques to achieve that. So again, we are going to create new new project flowers. So let's say or name whatever. I will name this one. 
and uh, say new and we say again new image recognition but this time when we choose the directory we can choose um, from flower data choose flowers okay so these are the flowers that I picked up from the internet so see these are different flowers and as you can see <coughs> all these flowers have some kind of a green background so what we want to say uh, ignore the green we don't care about green so this is a very simple approach for image recognition based on the color there are different techniques but it is interesting to show that even this simple approach can work for problems like this next uh, from flower data from, from junk folder select junk folder and there is green image okay so this is background we are saying okay ignore the green it means nothing to us then we hit again next when we say uh, flower data right? and again we choose the size that will be scale images 20 pixels <coughs> next we want flower flower network okay and put 20 neurons in the hidden layer and so this the number of neurons uh, the more they are the better the uh, recognition should be <coughs> no no <coughs> it's also think uh, think the less the better because the training is going to be the fastest so you need the smallest number that will get the job done the smallest number that will provide good generalization ability. So trial and error. Should trial and error, right. There is some, you know, recommendations use uh, number of inputs plus number of, of outputs times two or plus one or something like that, but it heavily depends on the problem you are dealing with. Yeah. So this is a new neural network, as you can see. It has lots of neurons. Uh, and the thing you can see automatically uh, all the neurons and the output got the labels here see this is flower 1, flower 2 and so on, flower 10, flower 2, flower 4 and so on so each neuron corresponds to one image you know? and it's just mapping image to one neuron and, and output so the nice thing is that we, uh, since Gertrude is here to mention that uh, uh, we create this on this platform and here we have a visual library and you can easily drag and drop to add more neurons to try different things to edit this neural network to add layers and do whatever you like to do so you can play with it until you tweak it for your specific problem uh, next thing that we are going to do as you already know is to drag and drop right this flower data set and hit the train button so leave the same parameters these are the lucky ones, you know, the faults that work. Okay. So now it takes a bit more time, but it's also very fast. You see, just in 30 iterations, we have solved this problem. Okay. So what we can do now is to select some of these um, flowers. small resolution on this screen is something like but as you can see probability for flower 2 is 0 0.02 and for flower 1 which we selected is 0 0.9 we can try to select flower 2 and you see the probability for flower 2 is 0 0.8 and uh, flower 1 is 0 0.02 so we can say just uh, say calculate Okay, if you hit calculate button, it will update this screen that we did on testing. And you will see that neuron that corresponds to flower 2 has the highest activation. Mm -hmm. All the neurons are colored. Red means high activation, gray means no activation at all. And in, in the middle, it selects the right 
no right color depending on the level of activation. So this is nice since you can see what's actually going on. So now we have this neural network. What do we do with it? First we have to save it, okay? To make sure it is saved, uh, select it and hit the save button. I think it's the first one, but hit the both of them for sure because we <laughs> put the <coughs> You have only one. Yeah, we uh, we merged this uh, with the visualization from J Monkey Engine, and we, that's how we got the second save button from their <laughs> models. <laughs> we have to put it out. So now we have a neural network that is saved as a file. It is a serialized Java object, and in order to use it in some other application, so you can go. Where, where, where is it? Where is the serialized Java object? Here it is. You can open this file stub. See, and you see the images that we have been used for training, and all the files here. And in neural networks folder, you can see flower network dot nnet. Okay, so this is this is the file. This is the neural network itself. And so this uh, is like a jar file. Or? No, it, it it is a serialized neural network object. Okay. Yeah. So in order to use that object into in your application. You have to put a reference to jar file, okay? And you just have to load this file using Neuroff API. You, you just deserialize that network into an application. Okay. Is it a use case you're going to show us? Yeah, of course. Uh, even better, you can go to help system and say browse help locally. Mm -hmm. And you have this how to section. And you have this image recognition tutorial which explains in detail what we did now and at the end <coughs> you have a code sample you can just copy and paste so what we are going to do since we are already in right NetBeans IDE we have this NetBeans modules here as well we can say new Java project we say we want new Java application right of image recognition okay okay and you can just copy paste just copy paste it from the help from the help system right here we copy this, just copy paste from this help system, but unfortunately it does not get the right, hmm. it isn't copied well. Let's copy paste everything, and now it's a wrong package, and okay, just leave the package, and what we need to do now is, um, fix a little bit this code. So at the beginning we have this few import sections, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't see see them right. <coughs> In order to fix those, we will add the um, will this work? Yeah. No. to uh, solve this analysis that I'm missing. You can, you can paste it uh, with Control shift v to keep, to keep the formatting from the original. Control shift v Before you paste. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's check it. You see this, if you go to the edit menu, you can add these. Yes. You see there are two different pastes. Based from paste. Yeah, this is not edit, this is the customized menu. Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> so anything, anyway. 
So what I'm going to do is to quickly fill this this comment section. And if I paste into the notepad, it will, will be different. No, it will be the same. Okay. Let's make this one. So <coughs> in order to make this Java application recognize the new letter, we also have to add references to jars, right? And um, use the jars provided in the in this um, in this neural two point nine folder. So use neural of core jar and neural of image rack jar. So these are the core type of classes, and this is the API for it image recognition. <coughs> You'll see how it looks like. So it now sees the neural network and it sees the image recognition plugin. Those are the only two classes that you need to use in your from your site in your application. So first step is to load the neural network. We're going to delete the comments. Yeah, to the, uh, yeah but um, <coughs> just a second. Um, okay, just uh, okay. Well, these two works the same. Uh, I think you should delete it and create a new static void name and copy the code into the public static void name. Okay. Okay. Let's do it like this and this. You need PSV and delete that line too. What to delete? Well, well, to delete that, that just delete that. So delete it. This two? Yeah. You need PSV and get back to the editor. You know that too, yeah. PSV and tab. BB. Uh, mm. Oh? It doesn't work so well. Yeah, sure, that's okay. yeah, but maybe in this, in this, uh, I can get the, all the plugins for it. Okay, we got this. Okay, uh, we have these issues here, but just copy and paste that code mm -hmm. and provide a path to the file that you uh, you save to the neural network. Just add references to jar files and provide a path to the neural network you save. Then you deserialize that file. And when yes. You, and when you feed it to the new image, to the new image, you feed it binary. Uh, uh, no, you feed it as a file. When you feed the file. Into you feed the file. It uh, uh, converts it to no, uh, yeah. You feed the binary file image. And it does conversion to format that the neural network needs and provides the output as a as a string. As a string of probabilities. Uh, probability yes. Distribution. Yes. 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 Just like what you see in the neural stream. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.